How is it possible to cut a diamond with a diamond? How is the hardest material on the planet able to cut the hardest material on the planet? This is an impromptu history of diamond cutting and a subject I'm passionate about. Diamond cutting evolved slowly over time. They probably had the biggest transformation in the 14th century. Prior to that, in the BCE era, in the Roman times, in the Egyptian times, the ancient Roman Egyptian times, diamond cutting was predominantly was dominated by the Indian, Central Asian people uh, like from the Indus Valley area. They were the masters of cutting stones and they had access to more diamonds. Later, in the early 19th and 18th century, um, where diamonds started coming out of Africa, that was a sort of changing period for um, the diamond industry and diamond cutting. Up until that point, Roman rings you might see with the beautiful double-sided pyramids, the dodecahedron shapes. Diamonds were enhanced by polishing the existing surfaces. When you dig them out of the ground, they typically come in these sorts of shapes. Double-sided pyramids, cubic shapes, triangular prisms, and other shapes where you can actually polish some of the flattish surfaces using another diamond. If you rub a diamond together in one plane, it may not really do anything, but as you start to rotate the angle of the other diamond adjacent, you'll start to notice that there will be some wear and tear on one of the diamonds or both. So over time, polishing diamonds with diamonds, the lapidary masters figured out that if they changed the angle at which they cut, or the faces and the approach to each face, you could get a diamond to remove that. Without breaking it down in too much detail, you're changing the direction and orientation of the carbon lattice, the crystal structure, into one direction that is much harder and more resistant to breaking, and you're rubbing it against the more vulnerable direction of a crystal structure on the diamond that you are braiding. From the Indian culture, a lot of the diamond cutting techniques evolved, and we really just enhancing what a diamond was. Then we start to see around the Renaissance period or the early 13th century, as more diamonds are coming into Italy and France, and there's a more of a popularity for this gemstone, you can actually pulverize a diamond with a sledgehammer. It's not easy, but you can grind a diamond up and you can impregnate that into wood, copper, iron. And using iron is sort of the contemporary technique and an iron plate, a disc, um, is used impregnated with diamond dust and that is how diamonds are still cut today. Nothing has really changed since the 13th, 14th century in terms of diamond cutting. We've just enhanced the speed of rotation of these plates and the technology of holding and faceting the stone. So around the 1330s, 1350s, lapidary artists in the medieval period would impregnate wood and they could cut emeralds and other softer stones, sapphires, emeralds, an amethyst, any other stone can be cut with garnet powders or sapphire powders, corundum powders or even diamond powders. Cutting coloured stones is so different to cutting diamonds. Coloured stone cutters do not cut diamonds. Diamonds are intense pressure and a very difficult a science to themselves versus coloured stones which are usually a whole different craft and mastery and a whole different approach to brilliance and cutting angles. Diamonds around this 13th century period now were actually being cut with micro diamond powder impregnated into uh, various metals or even wood could be used. Basically what happens is tiny diamond crystals get stuck and embedded into a hard surface of a softer material like copper or iron. Iron is what we use today and that diamond gets stuck and out of the millions of pieces of diamonds that are scattered, some of those diamonds are orientated in that perfect direction to cut. When you get your workpiece diamond and you place it on the cutting disc, um, you will notice that you'll actually get some abrasion depending on the angle at which you place that face. That's a key important factor if you want to cut the table of the stone or one of the curlets or the facets you want to polish, that face may not cut depending on the orientation of the diamond against that face plate. So cutting a diamond with a rotating wheel or on a friction plate changed the game because once you impregnate powder into a surface and you fix the diamond to rub into that surface, you start to develop all the tools to hold, clock and friction and rotate it. The diamond, a lot of these evolutionary tools started to happen once we moved away from the original diamond cutting. Another technique used to actually cut the diamond is to split the diamonds and cleave the diamonds. Diamond cleaving is a very old technique, even an ancient technique, and a technique we still use today. If you imagine the process of cutting glass, you take a plate of glass and score a line, and then you, you gently hold and put it up against the hard surface and push one in, you will break the glass. 
right at the scored line. That's how you break crystal structures. A diamond can be done the same. You can take a diamond, you can actually score the diamond using the perfect orientation, scratch a little line on a diamond, and then you can place that wedge that you've now created onto a piece of steel and you can whack it and the diamond will actually split along the crystal plane. So that's the earlier form of diamond cutting. If you have a big diamond, you've got an ugly part you want to remove, you want to cut it in two to create two beautiful shapes with a double-sided pyramid. Splitting it in two gives you two shapes that you can create two step-cut stones with. The Renaissance period, as turntables started to appear and more fixtures started to appear, we started to be able to create more complex and fancy shapes. Come around the turn of the 20th century, the evolution of the modern brilliant cut, the old mine cut and the old European cut, those are only really turn of the century cuts around early 19th century and early 20th century. And then the modern brilliant cut is more around the 1950s up until the 80s. It really developed and is a much more modern cut. But a lot of techniques and tooling has helped the evolution of the diamond cutting. Diamond cutting involves an enormous amount of pressure. We're not even sure that the abrasion is actually polishing the diamond or the surface under the pressure and heat is actually phase changing the diamond crystal to make it polished and smooth. We're pulverizing the diamond and turning it into carbon. That's how you're able to get a polished surface versus tiny little score lines. There's a little bit of a mystery behind diamond cutting. Once diamond cutting evolved into a technique where you could use a lapidary disc, pretty much all diamond cutting is done on a lapidary disc. All of the evolutions is experimenting with the clocking orientation and cutting angles of a diamond. A lot of pressure is had and that whole pressure conversation and the heat involved in cutting a diamond bleeds into a whole other conversation of colored diamonds. A lot of colored diamonds have a skin of color, not all of them, some of them are completely one solid color which makes it easy to cut. But diamonds can get so hot when cutting, the whole thing can actually turn red and turn a brown color. You've got to be very careful when you're cutting diamonds. Colored diamonds is like another tier of diamond cutting altogether. Diamond sawing was also an earlier invention where you could impregnate a wire with diamond powder and you could use that wire to actually saw in directions that may have been difficult to cleave. But then we had the invention of the laser cutting machines. You've probably heard of laser cutting diamonds. It's a really awesome and interesting technique where we can use 3D modeling and laser precision to instead of cutting lines and cleaving diamonds at different planes or even having to abrade large sections of a diamond, we can use a laser to actually rotate the diamond like a CNC machine and trim off all of the facets. And now a lot of diamonds are actually cut. All of the side facets and the initial cutting steps are done with a diamond cutter. Technology is so advanced and certainly the science of cutting diamonds, which I'm only a student of, diamonds are now digitally plotted. The large piece of rough, you might plot out your 50 carat stone, five carat, and your six two carats, and then the smaller stones you're gonna cut out of there. Everything's sort of mathematically plotted, and then you can use a laser to precisely cut and machine each piece of your diamond. Now you kind of can understand that the origin of diamonds started in predominantly in India, and the origin of diamond cutting was the shaping of the existing facets and using another diamond, literally rubbing it to create a flatter face. You now know that diamond cutting was very, very different to other gemstone cuttings. It was easy to identify a diamond because it was so difficult to cut a diamond. Only another object that was a diamond could cut a diamond. And so you can see pretty much an historical example we can find where people use diamonds and they've documented that always held this social value and this prestige and actual physical value because they are such a unique and very rare material. There are only a few spots in the world where diamonds are really accessible via shallow mines. Turn of the 18th century, the De Beers industry, that's really a period in Africa where digging and industrial mining allow the access to more diamonds. And of course, in Australia and Canada now with serious mining equipment, you can actually extract diamonds that weren't accessible. So that's why it sort of originated predominantly in India. The new diamond supplies started to come out of Africa. 